And now, a thought from man. There's a certain question that's been plaguing my mind for a bit, and that is, why do we love idiots so much? We have a certain affinity for idiots in entertainment. It makes some sense because some idiots have enough charisma that we end up caring for them. A lot of the time, idiot characters often get the biggest laugh because the stupid things they do hurt them or people deserving of it. In a weird way, idiots often act as a sense of justice for a series or a movie. They're usually the reason for an antagonist or just a bad character in general to get their comeuppance. That's often some reason why you don't end up finding yourself hating them. Case in point, Ed from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. He's a total idiot and he gets in the way of Eddie and Double D's scams, but the thing is, he's getting in the way of scams. He's often foiling Eddie and Double D and it's good that he's doing that because they're doing something that's bad. They're trying to rip off the neighborhood kids from their money. And it's always hilarious how he goes about it because he's so oblivious to what he's doing. He's most of the time in his own world that he doesn't really notice that he's messed up a plan that was supposed to go right. But you find yourself on his side because he's acting as a sort of unaware hero. He doesn't realize he did something really good. And that's kind of the comedy of it. And it's always funny with the reaction he gets from either Double D or Eddie because he foiled their plans. And it's always in such a hilarious manner. Ed, did you pack only the essentials like I asked? Ed, you're it! Go, Double D, go! Uh... Can see short legs? exercise for the day. Another character like Ed is Pinky from Pinky and the Brain. He's often a total oblivious dumbass, but he's always getting in the way of Brain's plans to take over the world. And you find yourself laughing at him because, yeah, you're doing a good thing, Pinky, by getting in the way. And it's always funny how Brain reacts to Pinky's blissful ignorance. Why didn't you tell me there was a tornado coming? Sorry, but after that cow, I was looking for the dish that ran away with the spoon. You have the IQ of a deck chair. One major thing that these characters have in common is that they're such blissful idiots that you can't find yourself really getting mad at them. They just live in their own world and they're so happy about it and the only people that really get hurt by their obliviousness is just bad people trying to do bad things. So you really can't find yourself wanting to be an asshole and rain on their parade. They're always the more positive people out of everybody. You kind of find yourself wanting to adopt their ignorance of the world because it shows a sort of childlike innocence that a lot of people strive to have. It's just a major fascinating thing about them. Crazy. Another type of idiot would be the idiots that get themselves hurt whenever they do something stupid. It's usually something on the lines of they've done something bad and everybody disliked that and decided to hurt them or they've done something bad and it just results in something that hurts them in the end. Those type of idiots also get a big laugh because they're getting what they deserve. They did something stupid and it resulted in them getting hurt, facing the consequences of their actions. And a lot of people easily find themselves laughing at that because yeah, that's someone getting what they deserve. That's them getting their just desserts. A great example of this is Billy from Billy and Mandy. He does a lot of things that are just absolutely dumb ideas in general, and he often is the one facing the consequences of that dumb idea. You find yourself almost busting a gut over it because he's getting what he deserves. He deserved to get hurt in whatever situation he put himself in. And that's honestly just kind of the great comedy of it, is that it's someone facing the situation that they put themselves in. And that's the big hilarity of it. A good thing for a lot of moronic characters is that they don't get in the way of the protagonist. Or the absolute worst of it is that they're just a kind of mild annoyance. They most of the time either get themselves into something and get themselves injured, or they'll just make some stupid comment about whatever and it just acts as a bit of a nuisance to the main characters. It's not something that hinders the plot or hinders the protagonist. A character like this is Lenny from Loud House. She constantly makes stupid comments about whatever siblings are talking about or she completely misses the point. She's a total ditz, but a lot of people really love her for it because she's so well-mannered, she's so kind. She makes up for her lack of intelligence by being so kind in nature. She doesn't really have any animosity towards people. Sure, she gets into fights with her siblings, but that's expected. But she's not so bad that she would hold a grudge against somebody or be so horrible and heartless. 
the main thing that she does that gets on her siblings nerves is that she takes things too literally and it mostly gets some type of annoyed reaction from her siblings but she never does anything that hurts anybody she's just more of a mild annoyance because she's so blissfully ignorant of things the most she's done that got in her siblings way is when their siblings came up with a plan to throw a game for their sister and the thing is, she took that literally and decided to pick up the game and throw it out the window. That was very stupid on her part, but it works in her favor because she was doing a good thing by revealing such a horrible plan. This is something that her brother and sister shouldn't have came up with, and her ignorance is something that worked in her favor, and even to her family's favor. And it honestly is a very funny moment. You really do find yourself laughing at her because she did something so stupid. The great thing about her is that you find yourself laughing at whenever she misses the point or takes something too literally because you imagine yourself talking to somebody like that. You easily relate to the reactions that she gets because you imagine yourself in that type of situation, in that type of conversation. It's a very good way to write a sort of blissfully ignorant idiot character who just doesn't get in the way and mostly adds some sort of harm to themselves or it's just a mild nuisance, but not too much to the detriment of the story or the characters. Michael! Oh, you're Polo. And who's Lenny? There are definitely a lot of really good idiot characters, but is there a way to make a bad idiot character? Honestly, I believe so. And a good example of this would be Billy Dilly. He's a major idiot, but not lovable in any sense, because a lot of the time his screw-ups hurt his friends, and he's usually blissfully unaware of it. And he sort of acts kind of apathetic towards them. And that's honestly a bad way to write an idiot character, is when you have them not give a shit that they've messed up, that they've hurt their friends. He ends up doing a lot of stupid things that end up hurting himself, which can be funny sometimes, but he doesn't have a proper reaction. And he ends up hurting his friends, and you're often like, why did he hurt his friends and he doesn't even care? What a monster! Can't really sympathize with him because he's supposed to be the hero, but he acts more like the villain and you oftentimes find yourself wanting him to lose rather than to win, and that should never be the case when it comes to protagonists. They should be someone you root for, and sadly, you can't root for someone who's so apathetic and blissfully ignorant towards the blight of his own friends. That's me, Billy Dilly. A good type of this idiot would be a character who recognizes that they've made a mistake and have hurt their friends, and oftentimes feel bad about it. One example of this would be Zeus from Gravity Falls. When he gets his friends lost in a cave, he gets yelled at for it, and he decides, okay, I made a mistake and I now need to correct it, and which he does to great success. That's a good way to write an idiot character who gets in the way. They have to feel remorseful, they have to feel like, I made a mistake and I must do everything to correct it, and they kind of have to succeed in that regard. Otherwise, you kind of feel like, well, you should just be out of this picture. You should just be gone from the movie or series in general. They have to be somebody who cares about their friends and don't wish to piss them off or get in their way. And Seuss is a great example of this. I know, and I'm comfortable with that. Um, um. Idiots are a great form of entertainment, and it's amazing how much they vary from one another. You would think we constantly get the same archetype over and over again, and they just wouldn't be special, and we'd be sick of seeing them. These moronic characters can always get a great laugh out of us and oftentimes we find ourselves relating to whatever plight they're going through because, let's face it, sometimes we even feel like them. Maybe some of us are them. That's sort of the great thing about having so many varying idiots. You can find yourself connecting with whichever certain one you feel like. Or even you've probably met at some point in your life. The good type of idiots are the ones who act as a bad character's offset, or they don't really hurt their protagonist, or mainly cause problems just for themselves. The bad types are always the ones who get in the way, or are hindered to the plot, and often don't care that they've done something wrong. Good idiots act as a sort of justice to their world, and I salute them half-mindedly for that. But that's just a thought. We know that